Hi, I'm Linda Robles. I am an environmental justice uh, nonprofit corporation here in Tucson, Arizona. I have uh, based my life upon the facts that our community has been under Superfund sites since late 1980s. Uh, while uh, we are under a cleanup, uh, we have continued to um, we have continued to. Uh, work with the community members and uh, keep them uh, informed and empowered. So what it is is it's, it's a large plume as uh, as uh, you see over at the maps here that we've got. Oops. And these and the maps plumes here. are the water plumes. Yes, these are the. This is the plume where there has been a widespread of uh, soil contamination throughout the south side communities at the close proximity people living at close proximities to the to the airport and the Air Force plant 44 which is Raytheon Missiles Company it's an industrial site where they manufacture our uh, weapons and they've been dumping their chemical waste well they right. dumped it back in around the 19 between 1950s and the 1980s uh, when they were exposed by the government, uh, EPA got involved and placed the site after a, an environmental investigation and remediation process took place in, during 1980s. Uh, in 1983, I believe it was uh, when EPA placed the site under the national priorities list. The site has been uh, under cleanup. EPA has paid the cost and uh, potential responsible parties have paid, the, reimbursed them the cost that they have put into the cleanup. And you started a nonprofit association? Yes, right? I did. I began my nonprofit corporation after finding that it wasn't me alone that uh, had sick children in our community. My, uh, my daughter passed away in 2002. She was hit with uh, lupus and uh, kidney nephritis, something that we never knew nothing about. Uh, and, and after that, then my other children were also diagnosed and, and, and uh, were diagnosed with can, uh, lupus and also King Fellers. It was then when my grandchildren were born and they also started experiencing kidney failures, rashes, birth deformities, and, and other diseases. And I finally just said, no more. I'm going to find out what's going on. And I recalled my past growing up in the South Side. Uh, and I decided to go back and find out, could it be the water that's, that's causing all these sicknesses? Did they ever even clean it up? Since the last time I saw you last year, I have gone, actually. I continued my research and my studies. I still am very determined. I want to know, am I the only person with cancer or kids with lupus? So I, I, what I did is I went back to my community and I began to get into these maps here, as you can see. So when I found out where the Superfund site plume began, as, uh, off the airport property, I began to, uh, to go into these communities where these pipelines had been located and these uh, Superfund wells. These Superfund wells that we're talking about is the TARP. The tarp was built in 1994. The tarp was built using air strippers to remove TCE from the, from the water supply. So these are water wells. Here we've got the south well filled and we've got the north well filled. And then we've got the tarp. What I did during this process in this project, I began knocking on people's doors within the areas where these wells were located. I began to take notice and document all the people's health issues and it comes out that no, I was not the only person with kids with lupus and kidney failures. I found uh, the nail that really stuck out was brain tumors among children and cancer. I mean lupus, I'm sorry, of course cancers also. However, one interesting thing that really pushed me harder was that my niece was hit with the IPG brain cancer. She has been, she has given no chance of survival. She is in her in stages, she is uh, actually she's in Florida right now uh, with the Make a Wish Foundation. Yeah. So this is the plume area that we are we are focused on. I also then began to see when I saw that problem, I actually then began to to uh, go to all this community, cover this whole community. 
and I've covered just about every home that you can imagine in this south side, in this map, and also documented their health issues. I began to uh, create meetings, community meetings, uh, and it's, it's been going very, very well. We have brought in quite a bit of community members. We're keeping them informed about what's going on, although EPA continues to tell us that the water is safe. This is the 1980s map I've used to compare with the new health issues that we're having. So this is the 1980s map that was used by Rose Augustine. She was the environmental justice lead during that TCE groundwater contamination. So in your investigation, you came across a book that was very helpful for, for you on environmental investigation and remediation? Yes, I did. I, I actually did, and, and I was able to... Um, actually contact the author who uh, educated me more about dioxane. So this book is on 1,4 uh, dioxane. That is correct. I, I, the book uh, explains, it's a summary, it's got a lot of summaries on, on dioxane and it, it specifically also uh, talks about Tucson Air Force Plant 44. Uh, the book is great but here's the thing is that I knew nothing about dioxane. I knew nothing about Deoxane because my mind was so focused on TCE. It comes out that deoxane had also been in dumped in these same wells, and I mean in these same landfills and the same property at the airport, which began migrating off airport site because it wasn't being contained, because it was never mitigated by EPA and the responsible parties during the 1980s investigations. This went on up until 2006 when the analytic methods had finally become, I mean, sorry, in the late 1990s and the analytic methods became available uh, and EPA then began using the method uh, here in Tucson where immediately in 2001 detected deoxane in the wells at the TARP and at the Air Force Plant 44. By then, you can imagine it's already widely tra uh, traveled through our soil, getting into our water systems. And is this something Aaron Brockovich was working on? In well, I contacted California? Aaron Brockovich's team in hopes that they would, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, include us in possible class actions with other places that have also had this problem, like out in Ann Arbor, California, uh, Michigan and uh, Orange County, California. So tell me about your meetings that you have here in Tucson. Yes, I have meetings every other Sunday, uh, 2 to 4 o'clock. Normally we have them at the Valencia Library here. It's within the Plume area uh, located in the south side of Tucson. We've had to move from that location because we've had so many community members come uh, and get involved with us. So uh, we've had to get a larger place, uh, but however, we encourage the community to come out and get involved, come to our meetings so they can know more about the community involvement. And the community is responsive? As, yes, okay. very responsive. We've been very blessed to have so many people come out. We now have a, from a, a crowd of maybe five people that started, we now have a crowd of over 100 people. Uh, we are at a very critical time. We are at a 30-day common period with uh, the EPA. And this is the, po the proposed um, plan that they have given the community. This was given to us on March 30th. Uh, and we only have until April 21st to comment on such an, uh, a, a very uh, serious problem that we're going to have for another 100 years. And you said that... Uh, they give you 30 days and they've known it for how many years? About? They have known about this since 2001. We are now at 2017. EPA has monitored private water wells. They have concealed this evidence from the community until just March 30th and, uh, the EPA gave notice to the community and they didn't send these to the community. There was no mass mail. This was sent to me by email and I had to contact the community. Because you requested it. Yes, I did. So has all the community members. After they found out about it through you. They didn't find out till yeah, exactly. After I informed them about it, they 
uh, contacted EPA and attended the Unified Advisory Board meetings, which are known as the UCAP meetings, they began participating in those meetings to find out more about deoxin. However, that was not the place because you only have a second to talk. We have been, ha we, we have struggled. We have had to struggle to get any information out of the government and EPA. So I understand you have a lawsuit going. Yes, we do. We have now, we have uh, uh, some lawyers that are interested. Um, one of which is uh, the former attorney who handled the cases back in the 1980s, uh, which was a big lawsuit back in the 1980s for the TCE groundwater contamination. Because this has nothing to do with TCE and was not a known um, chemical or pollutant at the time that had been released uh, or was never mitigated, uh, the attorneys are going to be representing the community members. We now have more than maybe 500, 600 member, uh, community members and victims that are going to be involved in this lawsuit. And your meetings, why don't you tell me about where your meetings are? Yes, our next meeting will be on Sunday from 2 to 4 o'clock. Uh, they will be at the 21, oh, the old Social Security office. And that location is at 2716 South South 6th Avenue. Old Social Security office on South 6th Avenue. And will be contact. our next meeting. Mm -hmm. And then my contact is Linda Robles39 at gmail.com. You can also reach me at 520-393-3671 if you'd like to participate, if you'd like to know about the lawsuits. I would encourage you to come forward and come fast because on Sunday we will be discussing the Monday appointment with the attorneys who will make themselves available. We'll be at the Casino Ballroom, which is a larger uh, facility where more people fit because we've had so much people come forward. We need these people to get involved because there are time limitations to every law and every statute. One of the things that I, I have um, found quite interesting is that for two years I have asked the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. I have been in contact with the Arizona Department of Health Services and I have also been in contact with the, uh, with the um, ATSDR, all who have denied our community. ATSDR is? Is the Agency for Toxic Substances and uh, Disease Control. I have contacted all these agencies, including the University of Arizona. I have been denied, um, our community has been denied of a health assessment. And that really was upsetting to me because then I find out just recently, the ADQ sent me the, the Interagency Service Agreement Amendments which is an agreement all along of fundings that have been sitting there and will be expiring in June, which I have been asking for three years for this assistance. I've been denied it and our community was denied it all along. It's been sitting there. Meanwhile, our kids are sick and dying and, and, and we've got all these cancers and nowhere to go.